Hey, good morning, church. It's great to be with you again. We've been working our way through the Sermon on the Mount. I hope you've been with me as we've made our way through. If not, you can look back and, and get up to speed and kind of catch up with us a little bit. We find ourselves arriving at Matthew chapter 6. A bit of a transition, a, uh, uh, a moving into a new section that Jesus has for us. We have been hinging off chapter 5, verse 20. And again, I'm going to remind you where Jesus said, For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Then he launched out into a series of contrasts between the righteousness that had been presented to them that turned out was very external and checking of the boxes, self-righteousness, if you will, of keeping the rules, and Jesus said, that's not how it's going to be in my kingdom. And he gave them six different examples of how righteousness is going to spring from their hearts, coming from a right relationship with him. Now, as we arrive at chapter 6, verse 1, we've got a new key verse. Beware, he says, of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. And so this righteousness that Jesus has been pointing to all along, it's going to be in our hearts. It's something that we will be practicing. It's not going to lie there dormant. It's going to be making its way out. And he is in this next series of examples going to be giving us three disciplines that we'll be familiar with. They're not going to be necessarily new. Uh, one of them we know about uh, that we're going to find first is going to be this notion of, of giving and specifically uh, giving to help others who are in need. Then he's going to transition us over into prayer, which we certainly all know about and we practice to one degree or another, but he's got some things that are going to challenge us to think about prayer differently. And then the last one that we may not even be very familiar with, oh, we're going to recognize it, but maybe not so much by our practicing of it. And that's going to be fasting. So we're going to start in verse 2 with the first of these disciplines, this practicing of righteousness. And here's how it reads. So, when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving will be done in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Let's take a minute and pray. Just ask the Lord to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive his instruction today. Father, again, we thank you for your word carefully and meticulously preserved for us as it has traveled now some 2,000 years to arrive at us, applicable to our lives just as real and important to us today as it was, Jesus, when you first spoke those words so many years ago. We ask you now, Holy Spirit, that you will take it and illumine it for us, light it up so that it will come alive to us, and teach us and challenge us and, 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 and rebuke us if necessary and change us. Give us hearts to hear, Give us the courage to submit to your word. We pray in Jesus' name and amen. So the challenge is that we will not be practicing our righteousness so that we're noticed by people. He says if we do that, we have no reward with our Father. Our Father is constantly watching to see how we practice our righteousness. The first of the examples is when we give. Now notice there is, there is an assumption there. It is assumed that we will be giving. There's a challenge there for us because sometimes if we aren't careful, we just sort of follow in line with our culture that just sort of consumes and, and, and 
and sort of uh, uses everything that we have for our own circumstances, our own situation. If we get a little extra, instead of thinking maybe, wow, I wonder if God has in mind someone around me who has need unmet, um, instead of doing that, we may just let our standard of living bump up along with that extra gift. We just sort of, uh, just sort of consume that extra that has come our way. But the assumption here is that this righteousness that is within us in the kingdom, that our following King Jesus now and allowing Him to direct our lives, allowing Him to call the shots, that when we have expendable income, extra there, that it's going to give us an opportunity to give to someone around us, someone who is experiencing need. And he says, when you do that, when you give to the poor, maybe you're recognizing that, maybe your translation it says when you give alms. That's what that is, is just recognizing an opportunity to give to someone who has need around you. He says, don't be blowing a trumpet, announcing, hey, look at this special thing that I'm getting ready to do. Make sure you don't miss this. I want you to see what's getting ready to happen. And so you announce that even before you've done that. He says, that's the hypocrites. The hypocrite is one who pretends to be other than he really is. And he says, they do that in the synagogues, the spiritual place, the religious place, as well as in the streets out in the everyday places of life. They want to make sure that nobody misses their practice of righteousness. And they do it so that they will be honored by the people who see it. Want to make sure people know what a special thing. It's like, i got to create a photo op. Man, oh man, is our culture not filled with that. Whenever... So many times I see it out there. Let's make sure the cameras are rolling because we're going to do something special for somebody here. You see that with our politicians. You see that with our celebrities. Sometimes you see it with our athletes. Man, they'll create a big deal whenever they're going to do something special. No, not always. You know, there are a lot of things that happen under the radar. But goodness sakes, isn't there an awful lot of that that goes on? We want to splash it all over. We want to manage people's impressions of us. And one of the ways we do it, Jesus says, causes us to miss the reward of our giving. We do it so we might be honored by men. Jesus confronted the Pharisees about that later on. He made this comment about them in Matthew chapter 23, verse 5, when he says, they do all their deeds to be noticed by men. And he gives a couple of examples. They broaden their phylacteries and lengthen the tassel of their garments. The phylacter phylacteries were literally little boxes of scripture they put on their forehead. And the, the bigger they made them, the more spiritual they looked. And the tassels were how they recognized one's uh, spirituality on their garments. And Jesus said, the only reason they're doing that is so the people will notice them. They might be honored by men. And then he says here at the end of verse 2, Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. Oh, they're going to get noticed by people, all right. And people are going to say, whoa, wow, look at what a special thing. That person just did, you know. They, they made sure everybody was aware of what they were doing to help someone else. And as a result, they got their reward. Jesus didn't necessarily minimize what they were doing. He said, well, they've got the, what they were looking for. They wanted people to see it. And people have seen it. And that's the end of it as far as we are concerned. Jesus said, don't. Do it that way. Rather, verse 3 tells us, but when you give, again, see there is that assumption, when you give to the poor, 
When you meet a need of someone who is less fortunate than you, when you have some discretionary income, maybe you've had a little windfall, and all of a sudden there's some money there that you weren't expecting, you don't really need it for anything, and the Lord might prompt you to meet a need in somebody's life. It is an assumption that righteousness within us is going to be moved that way. When you give, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That's how sneaky we're going to be with our giving. You know, can you imagine that if I've gotten this extra cash, it's come along my way, or, 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 or something extra. It doesn't always have to be cash. There's lots of things we might have that could be a blessing to someone else that we're going to be so cautious about not putting on a show that literally I could have it in my right hand and I could give it to someone and my left hand would be unaware of it. Now, obviously, that's not even possible because we just are not chopped up like that. But Jesus is making a point to the extreme that that's how we want it to be, that, that your left hand wouldn't even know what your right hand is doing. That's how cautious you are to make sure that you're not drawing attention to yourself with this practice of your righteousness as you're giving to the needs of people around you. Listen, your flesh is just like mine. Your brokenness is just like mine. It wants to be celebrated. It wants to be acknowledged. It wants somebody to say, ooh, nah, over it, doesn't it? Jesus says, not in my kingdom. We're going to be cautious to make sure that we aren't giving just to draw attention to our ourselves. And then he goes on, he wraps it up and says, as a result of that, that giving that you do in secret, when the cameras aren't rolling, when the flashes aren't going off, when the media hasn't gathered, when you find a way to do it and nobody is even aware of it, your Father who sees in secret will reward you. You see, He always knows. It does not escape His attention. And there will be full credit with our Father who is in heaven, whose kingdom we are now fully engaged in, in His kingdom, which is the priority of our life, that will matter most to us. Not whether or not my pals are aware of what I've done, not whether or not the folks at church know what I've done, or the people on my Facebook page know what I've done, or Twitter, or tweets, or whatever it is that we're doing these days. It's Snapchats or whatever. It's, that's not the issue. For us in the kingdom, what matters most is that our Heavenly Father knows. And when we manage to pull off that clandestine, unseen giving, He never misses it. And our reward then comes from Him. That's what kingdom giving looks like. That's what practicing our righteousness in the kingdom is all about. Not to be seen by people, but to, but to ensure that our Father sees. Giving that could be likened to the left hand, not even knowing what the right hand is up to. We will be givers, and we will be giving in secrets to honor our Father so the praise is His. Now I'm hoping that as we have been working our way through this Sermon on the Mount, that this has begun to be settled into you and that, that um, maybe something we've already talked about might come to your mind right now. Do you remember when we just finished up the Beatitudes and we came to a section in chapter 5, verse 13, where it talked about 
how we were the salt of the earth and verse 14 that talked about how we were the light of the world and we made light of the fact or, 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 or drew light to the fact that, that we were going to be as citizens of this kingdom of Jesus on the earth that we were going to be people of influence. We were going to change environments wherever we came. And verse 16 says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, I'm hoping that maybe this is filtering into you to such a degree that as you just heard me describe how the Father says, hey, we need to be doing our giving in secret so only the Father sees but maybe it might almost sound as if, hey, wait a minute, Jesus, that doesn't seem to align with verse 16 of chapter 5, which you've already told us. Back here you said, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works. And now Pastor Scott's coming along telling us, oh, but over here in chapter 6 on the practice of our righteousness, he says, let your giving, your blessing to others be done so that nobody else sees it. As a matter of fact, your left and right hand aren't even aware of what the other one's up to. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. What's going on with that? Let me give you an idea about what I think the difference is here. I think what is really going on is Jesus leans into this and it gave us that hint there. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. And then he lit into this notion of giving to help others. You see, what was the motive of this giving? What was, the, what was the, the, the motive of the practicing of the righteousness? And we're going to see it throughout. Uh, not only with our giving, but also with our praying and also with our fasting. What's the motive for the practicing of this righteousness? These disciplines that are going to work their way out of us. He says we've got to be careful. We're not doing it for the primary purpose of being seen by people. Are they going to see what we do? Are they going to see the difference and the contrast? Absolutely, they are. But we have to be careful. That's not what's motivating us. That's not what's driving us. And so let me give you a couple of questions here that may be helpful. When we have this opportunity to share, to give to someone who has need, here's a question that we might ask. Am I doing this in such a way that I get the credit or that God gets the credit? Is someone going to come away from this act of my practicing righteousness saying, Oh man, Scott, you are amazing. You are you're incredible. This is awesome. Then maybe I've missed the mark on as, a, as opposed to them coming away saying, wow, I can't believe how God has provided and he's used you to do it. Who's going to get the credit? Does this reflect most upon me or upon him? You know, who is this really going to shine light upon? If you aren't sure, then find a way to do it secretly. It used to happen with some regularity in previous days when someone would come to me and say, hey, I'm aware of a need in somebody's life, but I really don't want them to know that, that, it's, that I'm going to be the avenue that God uses to meet this need. So I'm wondering if you could help me with that. And I say, absolutely, I'd be happy to do that. What have you got in mind? And, and maybe it was a gift of some finances or maybe it was a gift of something tangible, you know, uh, uh, some clothing or, or maybe it was a, a, a laptop computer or, you know, all kinds of things have happened as I look back. Maybe it was food or whatever. Um, lots of different things uh, had been. And then I would be able to contact that person and say, hey, um, I want you to know that uh, 
a blessing is coming your way and here's what it is. Uh, God was aware of a need in your life and, and God has moved upon someone's heart to meet that need. Secret giving. And I just got to be sort of the director of that gift as it landed there. And what happened was inevitably, you know, man, were they thankful to God for what had gone on. And so they were blessed. And the person who did that secret giving was blessed. They just wanted to make sure the light didn't shine solely upon them. They wanted God to get the credit for that. And as a result, mission accomplished. It was as God knew it should be. And so as we think about this, practicing our righteousness through, through the giving to the needs of others, slow down long enough before you jump into the middle of that. Why am I doing this in such a way that I'll get the credit or that God gets the credit? If you aren't sure, then find a way to do it secretly. Spend some time with Him allowing Him to give you some insight into your motives about what it is that's prompting you. For instance, Proverbs 16.2 says, All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight. In other words, I can come to a situation and generally speaking think, Yep, my motives are all good. I'm all my ways are clean. This is good. I want God to get the credit. But Proverbs 16.2 ends by saying, But the Lord weighs the motives. He knows what's going on. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 4.5 says that in another little way. It's pointing on down the road when it says, Therefore, do not go on passing judgment before the time, but wait until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the things hidden in the darkness and disclose the motives of men's heart, then each man's praise will come to him from God. See, God knows the motives of our hearts, and I'm contending with you, if we will take the time to wait before Him as to these opportunities to practice our righteousness with giving to the needs of others, that He will help us discern just what our motives are. Are we really looking to create a little personal praise? Are we really hoping to get a nice pat on the back? Or are we really all about putting that glory onto God? You know, allowing Him to get all the credit for what it is that has gone on. When we aren't sure, Default, opt to that secret sort of giving. That's what he's saying here. I'm certain. Another helpful tool to discern or to figure out what's going on is Hebrews 4, verses 12 and 13 it says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. See, there's another reason we need to be saturated in God's Word, is that it will often lay ourselves open before us because it judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. He goes on to say, And there is no creature hidden from His sight, that all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. That's the importance of God's Word to help us check our motives. Why am I wanting to practice my righteousness in this way? God, what is my whole heart up to? Is it pure before you? Is it really desiring for you to get credit for this? Or am I hoping for a little kickback in my direction from people. Let me give you one example. About, actually it'll show us both ways when it happened. Uh, one, one account was a, a giving that was absolutely acceptable and honoring to God and an example when it absolutely was not. It comes out of the era of the early church, Acts, 
And first we see at the end of chapter 4, you know Acts well enough to know that by now the church has been born, the Holy Spirit has come, the church has launched, God is affirming and confirming the new message of the gospel with signs and wonders and many people are coming to be saved and, and, and the church is responding by just sharing with each other, just uh, all kinds of giving to meet need uh, is happening. And let me, I'm just going to pick up and read a bit in Acts chapter 4, verse 32, and it says, And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were given testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them, and all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet, and they would be distributed to each as any had need. So there it is, giving to those who had need. And where was that coming from? Well, people were selling things that they owned, their own possession. They were bringing those proceeds and giving them to the apostles who were then distributing that. So you can see some of that uh, uh, secret giving, if you will, sort of uh, uh, under the cloak where it was happening through someone else. But then something interesting happens. One of those givers is actually named. And Joseph, a Levite of Cyprian birth, who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement, and who owned a tract of land and sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So it is absolutely possible that we are able, as the Holy Spirit prompted this record to be preserved for us, giving credit to a particular individual as he sold some land and he is it is acknowledged that he sold it and he brought it and gave it to the apostles. So we know here is this guy. It is actually possible to be named uh, along with a gift in such a way that it is God's glory. There is nothing inappropriate about this gift that Barnabas, who, by the way, is indeed going to be a, a fine traveling companion for the apostle Paul on the first missionary journey. So it can be done. That, 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 that this giving isn't always secret. It can be done with right motives even when others are going to know about it. But then the stark and troubling contrast comes in chapter 5. But an, a man named Ananias, Ananias, uh, Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. Okay, just like Barnabas, not quite. And they kept back some of the price for himself with his wife's full knowledge and bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. So there's a little deception taking place here. They had sold this property, they're going to bring part of it and lay it at the apostles' feet. The problem is, you cannot lie to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit tipped this plan to Peter, who in verse 3 says, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. There would have been absolutely nothing wrong with Ananias and Sapphira selling this property and giving part of it to the church. But they wanted to be seen in the same light that Barnabas was seen. Wow, what a gift. Wow, how impressed people would be if we fit into the same gig as, as Barnabas did. So let's sell this and we'll give part of it, but we'll let them think that we gave it all. Peter said that wasn't necessary. 
Anything that you give would have been a blessing, but what you have done, you have lied to the Holy Spirit and you have lied to people at the same time. And the consequences were swift and significant. And as he heard these words, Ananias fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came over all who heard of it. The young men got up and covered him up, and after carrying him out, they buried him. Now there elapsed an interval of about three hours, and his wife came in not knowing what had happened, and Peter responded to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. And Peter said to her, why is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out as well. And immediately she fell at his feet and breathed her last. And these young men came in and found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And then a statement which I think is, is an understatement. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard these things. You think? <laughs> you think? Truth telling matters. It's important, which isn't the real point of me pointing you in the direction of these stories. What I wanted you to see is it is possible to give in such a way when everybody knows and it for it to be appropriate and well received and God honoring, but at the same time, stark contrast that God takes it very seriously when we give in a different way fashion when we give simply to be noticed by men we can be noticed by men and when we are we will have our reward in full you know Ananias and Sapphira had they had they given appropriately even if they hadn't given it all that would have been absolutely fine but that's not what they did and as a result they brought judgment upon themselves Giving to needs around us in a way that gives glory to God. Oh, how pleased He is. Sometimes it'll be done in a way where it is known and, and, and we let our light so shine in such a way, our good works shine, glory to God. Other times, we we'll want to check those motives a little bit. Maybe we're not quite sure. And so we'll choose to do our practicing of righteousness with our giving to the needs of people around us. And we'll not let our left hand know what our right hand's doing. And we'll give in secret. And our Father will be pleased. And He will reward us as a result. Sometimes, sometimes we'll give in such a way as he described in chapter 5, verse 16, we'll let our light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That was Barnabas. Other times we'll want to make sure that we aren't falling into that tendency that we're all prone to, to be seen by people oohed and awed over like Ananias and Sapphira were hoping to be. And we'll choose rather, I think I'm going to allow my giving to be seen in secret and I'll leave that whole reward business up to my father who never misses a thing when my heart is desiring to practice righteousness that he has placed within me. That's what it's going to look like in the kingdom. We're not going to be blowing a trumpet so everybody sees because we're not concerned about the honor of people around us. What will matter most to us is the honor of our Father, and He will not miss it. Let's pray. Father, it cannot be denied that you have blessed us in America immeasurably. We have so, so very much and Lord, we have been taught and, and, and well taught uh, to 
simply consume and enjoy what you have blessed us with. And Lord, you say in your word that you have given us everything to enjoy. That certainly can be true. But oh Lord, what blessing there is when we choose to allow ourselves to be conduits through which you flow portions of your blessing to us, to the lives of others. Father, teach us to be careful. Teach us to check our hearts, to linger before you with our motives as to whether or not this opportunity of giving would be something that would shine great light on you, that would give us an opportunity to, to let you be honored, or whether or not it would rather be done in secret. You teach us, Lord. Thank you for what you have in store. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Have a great week.